The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hi, I'm Minister Marty Ringer, and thank you for joining us here at St. Mark Lutheran Church for another great Sunday service. You know, we are living in hectic times and stressful times that we know that we need to relax and uh, focus on Jesus. And that time really is right now, right here in this space. It is time for us to go back to Christ, give him our burdens, and let him change our atmosphere. I pray that this service and sermon is a blessing to you.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of mercy, we confess to you that we are people of too much. We eat and drink too much. We complain too much. We lie too much. We are just too much. Have mercy on us, Lord, and hear us as we confess, saying together. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Rest in God's grace and love, and know that all of your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Even though it is summertime, our lives are still crowded and rushed. And in today's scripture, Jesus tells us that we need to rest. We're reminded that there will always be things to do, places to go, people to see, but that we need the rest of the spirit that God's love provides. Thanks be to God for a little time off. Now, hear the gospel of our Lord as it is written in Mark, the sixth chapter, starting at the 30th verse down to the 34th and the 53rd verse down to the 56th. And we say, glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized them and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the gospel of our Lord, and we say, praise to you, O Christ.
Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for, Lord God, we thank you for another day, Lord God. We thank you for allowing us to come and share in your word, Lord God, to learn more about you, but also to learn more about ourselves, Lord God. On this blessed Sunday, Lord God, we just ask for you to give us a word. Give us some guidance. Lord God, we just come to you. Now, I ask you, Lord God, to remove me and you enter into this space. Allow this vessel just to be an instrument for you, to speak to your people. Lord God, I thank you in advance for all of your blessings, all of your mercy. In your holy name, we all say amen. So as usual, I like to say uh, happy Sunday, St. Mark, and happy Sunday to all that are listening and joining in for this service today. Now, I'm going to... I'm going to try to do something today, okay? I'm going to try to slow down. I'm going to try to take my time on this one. Because, see, I believe that this, this scripture today, the scripture readings today is something for all of us. Something that I think that all of us deal with, all of us come across, no matter how much money you have, what kind of health condition you're in, what stature you feel like you are in life, all of us are going to relate to this scripture today. But you know, before I start, I, I, gotta, I gotta reflect on something. You know, when I was younger, in grade school and, well, high school also and college also and classes after that, you know, I'm just being honest. And I know I'm not by myself, but you know, I have a, I have a tendency of studying just to pass the test. Or studying to just to pass the class. But I wasn't studying and applying those lessons in school to my life. Now I know I'm not by myself. You know, I, I hear people a lot of times saying, you know, math, you know, that uh, geometry, I, when will I ever use geometry? But I bet if you actually knew geometry and applied that, some things in your life might be different. You know, we go to school and we learn things that we just kind of say, this is just to pass the test. You know, I, uh, I think about that because I think about us as... Christians and Jesus followers that a lot of times we are studying to show ourselves approved but not applying these things to our lives. You know, we know Exodus 20 where Moses gives out the Ten Commandments. We are we're knowledgeable about the laws. We study the laws. We know thou shall not Commit adultery. Thou shalt honor thy mother and father so their, your life may be longer. But do we apply these things in our life? These things that we learn, these things that we study, these, this thing as Lutheran, do we just study how to be a Lutheran? Do we just study how to be a Christian? Do we just study to be how to be a Jesus follower? Do we actually apply these application, these things in our, in our lives. I, I'm asking these questions and making us think because I, I do believe that all of us 
right now is standing in the need of prayer. I think right now we're all standing in the need. We all need something from God, from Jesus, right now. Now, I, I, I know if your health is good, I bet your finances might not be. But if your finances is good, maybe your family might not be. I say this because we all are in need of Jesus' grace. Now, I say all that because once we get to this scripture lesson, I, I need you to understand, there are many people in these passages that are in need. Just like I was saying last week or the week before last about how Mark writes, he puts a lot of stories inside of stories. And this one is, it's interesting, it's a story that we touched on a little bit last week where Jesus had sent out the disciples and they ministered in the villages and the countrysides and they came back and we kind of talked about John the Baptist and but now we're coming back and the disciples have done their ministering work for the day and Jesus who knows us and knows his disciples said it's time for y'all to rest let's go to a quiet place just me and you and let's let's rest it's amazing Jesus knows what you need without you even saying it but they go off to the to, to the deserted area and rest and spend that quality time with Jesus then then they go and they see the people that are coming trying to trying to and this is interesting trying to see where Jesus is going to be at trying to see where Jesus was going to be at next sometimes we're doing that too trying to figure out what's next for Jesus when we need to figure out what's next for us but they are they're running, running to Jesus, and Jesus sees them, and I like that when Jesus sees me, it's the same thing, because he has compassion. He has this compassion for the people, because he sees that they are like sheep without a shepherd, kind of lost. I don't know if this one applies to you, but I know that somewhere in these scriptures you can see yourself because sometimes I can see myself on the shore probably looking like a lost sheep. Even though I know Jesus is the shepherd, but just like in this passage, they know he was the source of all wisdom and all healing, but they wanted to just be with him and let's talk. And he sat there and taught them. Now, in between verses 30 and 34, well, 34, then we jump down to verse 53. It, there's some things that happen in, in between there. That's not in the scriptures today because it's like that sandwich that I was saying earlier about Mark. But Jesus goes on and sees the need that these people needed to eat. And he saw the need and he gave the blessing. With the five loaves and two fish, he sits them down, he teaches them, but then at the same time he feeds them. And he's still doing that with us today. He's teaching us and he's feeding us spiritually and naturally. Later on, he goes and tells the disciples to go on the other side while he dismisses the crowd. And they go right on the boat to the other side. And he comes walking on the water to the other side. Probably going to pass him, but he's see there in distress. And he still calms the waters. You know, Jesus sees the need in our lives. Jesus is the one that can fix that need. The thing is, it's us. 
See, we know about Jesus. Each Sunday we talk about the Gospels on Bible study. We go through the, the Bible and we learn as much as we can about God, the triune God, the, 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 the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We know about grace we know that he gives us this grace, but for some reason we don't apply it. How many times you, 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 have you been in church yourself and you hear one of your fellow church worshipers as they go through all of the tragedies of their life and their week and their, or their season, And it's almost as if they don't know Jesus. Or, or they feel like, that I, I know I might get talked about when I, when I say this, but I don't know, they might be saying, oh, Jesus, you, you got what I need. But we just see him as a friend. We just... See him as a friend. Oh, Jesus, you. You got what we need. But we see you as a friend. Not our redeemer, not our savior, not the source of all healing, not, the, not that same Jesus that if you just touch the cloak of his garment, just to him that you could be healed. For some reason, we can read about it, but we can't believe it. We can't put this in practice. We are studying to pass a test, but we're not studying to apply it. Yes, the Bible says study to show yourself approved. Yes, get as close as, these, close to, as you can to these scriptures. But don't just learn it. Apply it. When you are going through these trials and tribulations in life, when you are hungry, when you need direction, Jesus is there. Jesus is still there saying, come to me. I will fix your all of your problems. And after I fix them all today, the ones that you're going to get tomorrow, I'm going to fix those too. Let's not just study grace. Let's start applying grace. Let's not just know Jesus or know about Jesus. Let's start utilizing Jesus in our life. In these scriptures, he took care of all of their needs. The ones that needed just rest. The ones that just needed quality time to say, Jesus, can we just talk to you? We did a long mission, but we want to tell you what all we did. He's there. The ones that are running after Jesus. In the scriptures, that they, they, they even talk about people recognize them. Do you even still recognize Jesus when you see him? Can you recognize his power, recognize his grace? Or are we just studying? Oh, Jesus, you. You got what we need. We know he's the Messiah. We know he's the Redeemer. Let us put our faith, our belief back into Jesus. Let's not, let's not read this like this is a Marvel movie. Let's not read this like it's some fairy tale. Jesus is here for us, for me, for you, for that need. That, that old song that my, I remember my mother and grandmother used to sing, I need thee, oh, I need thee every hour, Lord, I need thee. 
I need you to realize that you still need Jesus. Pray to him. Talk to him. Apply the things that you have studied, the things that you know. Apply them in your life. As we all pray. Lord, gracious, gracious healer, redeemer, sustainer. Lord God, we know that we are always in need. We are in daily need. But Lord God, we know that you are giving daily blessings, daily grace, daily mercies. So Lord God, we look to you, Lord God, and just ask you to give us that strength, that tenacity to move forward, to not just study your word, but to apply your word in our lives. Lord God, allow the gospel to be a part of us. Allow us to eat your words. Lord God, allow us to be a reflection of you, to be true disciples, not just studiers of them. Lord God, we thank you for all of your blessings, all of your mercies, and just you, in your holy name. Amen. You know, sometimes we have to be reminded that we're not alone in this world. Jesus didn't leave us that way. He left something here for us. He left the comforter for us. And we got to remember we're never alone. In my times I've traveled some roads, a rolling stone, nowhere feels like home. And I've seen people come and they go life is just a story of some highs and some lows tell me
Jesus saw the great crowd and he had compassion for them. Jesus sees us and knows each of us by name. So let us pray to our shepherd who is always with us and always hears us. Let us pray. Loving God, let us hear your voice and guide us in safety along your right path. Forgive us when we are wrong. Fill us when we are empty. Guide us when we are lost. Comfort us when we are tired. May God guide our steps and direct all our ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord God, reconcile us when we are disconnected and guard our lives with your spirit. Bring peace where there is trouble, food where there is hunger, hope where there is despair. Lead us into paths of righteousness for your sake and for ours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Have mercy on all who are in need, dear Lord. Have compassion on all who are sick or stressed. Heal and restore them and give them confidence in you. Be with those among us in special need, especially those on our prayer list and those whose names are known only to you in the depths of our hearts. We pray for Tamiya Smith. We pray for Joseph Robinson III, who is still awaiting a kidney transplant. We pray for the ministry of this church, St. Mark. We pray grace and mercy upon all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Merciful God, as your son heard the cries of the people, for him to heal them. Hear our prayers according to your grace so that your glory may be known throughout the world. This we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have just a few announcements for today. So be sure to watch the video announcements at the end of service for all additional information. First of all, we'd like to say a happy birthday to a lot of people this coming up week. We say happy birthday to Brian Harris on July 17th. We say happy birthday to Charlene Harris on July 19th. We say happy birthday to Aaron Smith on July 22nd. And also on July 22nd, we say happy birthday to Rodriguez Davis. Join us for Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. If you would like to join in the study of the book of Revelation, send your email address to stmarkchurchlutheran at gmail.com. As we return to in-person worship services, we are in need of supplies. We need donations of garbage bags, toilet paper, paper towels, and especially bottled water. Please drop off your donations at St. Mark on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Your donations are always greatly appreciated. Well, here we are again, asking for you to support the ministry and mission of St. Mark. Now, this is a free will offering. We don't have set member fees. So we're asking you just to bless God's work through this congregation. As a small family church, we depend on the tithes and offerings from our church family and friends. We are just asking you to include St. Mark in your giving to help us continue to spread the good news the way we do. So to all our members and those who join us weekly online, if you have been blessed by this ministry, bless us in your giving through your online banking 
Cash App, Venmo, or the U.S. Mail. And of course, we thank you so much for your support of our church ministry as we present our gifts back to God. Let us pray. We offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given to us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by God's grace through faith, let us confirm what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This week, apply what you have studied. Apply what you already know about Jesus. And trust in Him to fix all of your needs. Go in peace and serve the Lord.